As a veterinarian, it's our responsibility to practice antimicrobial stewardship. And one of the major reasons why we need to do that is to prevent the development of antimicrobial resistance. And this is important for our patients and making sure that we're selecting the right antimicrobials for the right infections in order to lower the chances of resistance. But it's also really important from a human standpoint as well. Antimicrobial stewardship is crucial and we, as companion animal veterinarians, have a very critical role. How we use antimicrobials and will have an impact on inducing antimicrobial resistance. So due to the differences in species and the, the tissue or the, the area of infection you're, you're trying to treat, it really is important to ensure that you select the most appropriate antibiotics to prevent antimicrobial resistance. One of the challenges that veterinarians face is when they have a patient that comes in and they know that that patient needs an antimicrobial, but they've submitted a culture and they're waiting um, for those results um, to come back in, but the patient's super clinical. Um, and in those cases, we need to reach for empiric antimicrobials. And the best way that we can do that is by looking at what organisms we think are gonna be the most likely um, to cause that infection, and then looking at at the most current antibiograms that we have um, in order to select the most appropriate antimicrobial for that infection and that site. If you've selected empirical therapy and that's failed, it's not worked, it really is important to then um, move forward with additional diagnostics to ensure we're on the right path. If you have a patient that you're treating a urinary tract infection for and your empiric therapy doesn't work, you do need to culture that urine. And we're not just looking to identify what organisms are there based on culture, but we need to know what antimicrobials that they're susceptible to. And so we have to make sure that we're requesting antimicrobial susceptibility that's appropriate for the sample that we're selecting. But if you're not sure, you should reach out out to your veterinary microbiologist to make sure that you're selecting the appropriate diagnostic um, for your patient. Diagnostics are very important. Again, not only know that we are dealing with a bacterial infection, but um, what type of bacteria, and so we can make an informed decision uh, with the use of um, antimicrobials. Infections are most of the time secondary to an underlying problem, so very important for us as a veterinarian also addressing that underlying problem so we can avoid reoccurrence because that has been found to actually have an impact on um, selection for resistant bacteria. When using uh, more broad spectrum antimicrobials, we run the, run the risk of creating antimicrobial resistance when really a, a more narrow, narrow spectrum antibiotic could be effective. When we use um, a combination of topical therapy and systemic therapy, we will likely decrease the length of the systemic therapy, which will help to decrease the likelihood of inducing resistance. As we learn more and more the impact that antibiotics can have in normal flora, again, normal flora of the skin, normal flora of the gut, um, we know that some antibiotics have a larger impact, a bigger impact on that normal flora. Amoxicillin clavulanic acid, for example. Often people think of those like interchangeable, amoxicillin and amoxicillin clavulanic acid. Clavulanic acid is not only a beta-lactamase inhibitor, but it gives amoxicillin a more broad spectrum. Therefore, selecting a more narrow spectrum antibiotic will have less impact, right? We will have less impact on the normal flora, and it will be less likely that we will select for those resistant bacteria. In patients with a localized infection, it really is superior to select a localized therapy. And that, that holds true for a lot of different things, including antimicrobial selection. Metronidazole is probably the most commonly prescribed antimicrobial for dogs that have acute colitis or diarrhea. The major issue is that when you look at what actually causes acute colitis in dogs, you see that infectious etiologies are actually really uncommon. So reaching for it as an antimicrobial or as a antiprotozoal probably doesn't make the most sense um, in the majority of cases. And actually we know 
That metronidazole can have severe impacts on the gut microbiome, and that could actually prolong recovery from colitis. So if you think about it from a veterinary standpoint, if I can have resolution of clinical signs of colitis in dogs with acute diarrhea with fiber and not have to reach for an antimicrobial, um, that has a double benefit. One, I keep the microbiome happy in my patients and in a more stable um, community structure, but also I'm practicing the antimicrobial stewardship by not prescribing that antimicrobial for non-infectious etiology. For best practices in considering, you know, patients that are under, undergoing surgery, we really should avoid using antibiotics in those patients where the surgery is really uncomplicated and clean. In cases where um, it's a complex surgery or we really feel antibiotics are necessary, we should consider perioperative antibiotics uh, rather than postoperative antibiotics. With your help, we can keep antibiotics useful for both humans and animals.